Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Harley Quinn, Season 4, Episode 7. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So picking up in the aftermath of last episode, we had the whole situation with, you know, Harley obviously thinking she's crazy because she saw a doppelganger, which considering this episode's about time travel and, like, Maybe Harley isn't crazy. Maybe she kind of is, but maybe in that instance she isn't. Because now with the whole time travel angle of it, I'm like, was that a time paradox? Where it's like, that's Harley from a future episode going back in time trying to stop the apocalypse. Feels like that's most likely probably going to be the case. And it's just kind of like that Ouroboros thing of like a snake eating its own tail thing of like, right, it's already technically happened of them resolving everything, but that was a time frame where like Harley hadn't gone back in time to be that other Harley yet. You know, it's it's a, it's a loop, you know, so it all has to happen because it's already happened, but it has to happen for our Harley. So she has to eventually be that. Other. That's what I'm assuming. Maybe it's just going to be like, no, she's just crazy. But it feels like with the introduction of the time travel, it feels like that's obviously got to be like future Harley coming back to save save you know like i said it could be harley from like episode eight nine or ten trying to like stop the apocalypse so you know but uh either way she said it's kind of sad when like harley had no one else to talk to it's not like i mean babs is so busy trying to solve nightwing's murder because she doesn't believe that joker did it because it's like right why would he sit on that information for like a day he would have announced that to everyone so and even harley's like yeah he's not good at keeping secrets and sadly she's so focused on that like a teammate who it's supposed to be kind of like family but to be fair harley never crossed over into family especially when like babs is so obsessed with like right because she's alone in this situation she, she doesn't have bruce to kind of balance things out nightwing is dead and uh, Damien's off with his mom, so she's kind of drowning alone, and like, and she's, you know, I mean, to be fair, it's like, th that's the bats for you, they they get obsessed with their mission, and not, they kind of have blinders on, like, they're all about their justice, so it, 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 it's very befitting for Babs to kind of get, like, severely, like, tunnel vision with this, and it's kind of sad, especially, I brought it up uh, in a previous episode, how, like, Babs was pushing it so hard, like, last season, about how her and Harley were friends, and now it's like, yeah, that friendship kind of, I guess it, it kind of takes on a different life when you're now co-workers, so it changes the dynamic, so it isn't just like friends, and now it's like, I don't have time for friends, like, find someone else to kind of talk to about that stuff, as I like, go talk to Ivy about it, it's like, well, I want to, but Ivy's busy, and I'm trying to respect the boundaries she set up, and just like, Babs kind of completely ignores her. Uh, she tried to go to Gordon to try to find out, like, oh, did I, am I crazy? And it's like, well, Gordon recorded over all of the security footage because some of it was, like, focusing on, um, focusing on some of the, uh, King Shark's kids and stuff like that. And, um, it's just like, Gordon's just always doing his own thing that inconveniences everyone at every possible angle, but... Ivy and the natural disasters are planning on stealing a time spear from the uh, Legion of Superheroes. Not even to use it, but just for the purposes of, um, just for the purposes of, like, oh, I'm just going to put it, like, on a mantle, like, and just kind of, like, have it as, like, a trophy in my room. And while they're doing that, like, Harley ends up finding out what they're up to and ends up confronting Ivy, but Ivy's, like, so busy with her supervillain thing, and it's like, right, our, our boundaries and stuff, like, wait, are you trying to stop me? She's like, no, I'm just trying to talk to you, because she literally doesn't have anyone else. Like, all she had was, like, the Bat family, and it don't seem like she's particularly close with the other superheroes, because, like, the only people she kicks it with are the Bat family, so, and obviously she doesn't really have any friends on the villain side of things, because, well, she's ostracized from them for being a hero now, so she can't really kick it with them. Once again, I guess the whole, like, um... Oh, God, I'm blanking. On the uh, persona she created for herself, Secret Identity. Like, I guess that isn't going to be a recurring thing. I guess it's like, right, it didn't work out in episode three, so she kind of abandoned it. Um, I'm blanking on the the name now. But I guess she's not going back to that. So, yeah, she kind of, only person she has. I mean, it's understandable. It's like, right, this is your person. This is your ride or die. So, of course, you're going to, like, rely on them when it comes to, like, something you're going through. But, sadly, I, which I think is so interesting because 
I do put a lot of onus on Ivy in this part, in this season, because I feel like a lot of the issues last season were on Harley's side of things, of her not being, like, really honest and upfront with Ivy. I mean, yeah, there's some stuff Ivy didn't bring up about the whole, like, her and Catwoman sleeping together thing, but to be fair, once again, that was years before her and Harley, but... You know, Harley was the one kind of keeping a lot of secrets and wasn't really like 100% copacetic with Ivy. But now I think it is a thing of her trying to be honest and open, but like Ivy's just kind of like blocking her with like talk, you know, of like, right. Because she's trying to, yeah, like this whole villainy thing. She's like, once I'm like at our peak, like I'll make a, such a name for herself that basically when we're 60, still looking hot and sexy, we'll be able to kind of retire in like clo um, comfort. But um, I wonder how would that work for... I mean, I guess it's like when you both end up retiring, I guess it'll benefit you. Uh, but it's just like... I mean, I'm sure it probably happens in the comics at some point. Because obviously, villains and heroes end up probably together. I mean, obviously, even though she balances the line of, like, anti-hero, but even Catwoman and Bats, you know, Batman, so... But either way, Harley's like, all right, fine, you don't want to listen to me. Let's time travel to the future where we're both old and you'll listen to me. So they time travel... But they end up in what twenty? They end up in what twenty? Wasn't it forty eight? Which I'm like, is that a hundred percent on purpose or not? Because if you're unaware, the Arrowverse future stuff is specifically like, uh, some of the future stuff like Star City and stuff like that. Like that was like early on in like the Arrowverse era of like early Legends of Tomorrow and stuff. But eventually, like. Because even, like, what was going to be, like, Green Arrow and the Canaries was going to be in the 2040s. So, it is interesting that for them to pick that time frame in particular. I guess that was, like, yes, yeah, 20 years, so enough, a lot can happen and change. But also, some things, well, I'm about to say some things to say the same. It's like, nah, uh, the world kind of went to hell. Um, the last of humanity is here to, uh, the, because basically, uh, Damien had turned into a straight-up dictator, which is, like, Cool, it's interesting to find out that uh, Damien leaning into what everyone has always referred to him as, as a little asshole, and here he is being a full-blown dictator, like, ruling the world and stuff like that. Uh, kind of like making Gotham a police state. Because um, he's the last of the Bat family, so it makes you wonder, did something happen to Barbara or did he do something to Barbara? I wonder what happened to his mom. Like, it was just him. I mean, you would expect his mom to still be around. That also depends on if, once again, like, the whole, um, God, what's it, uh, Lazarus Pit? I feel like some, I, I'm sure it changes from continuity to continuity. The reason I was bringing it up is, like, I thought the, um, the Lazarus Pit can also, like, I mean, it can resurrect you and kind of make you evil. I mean, that might just be an arrow thing. But it doesn't also give you, like, longevity. I know it can heal you, but I think it can also give you longevity. But I think other times it doesn't. Because I've seen in Titans, it didn't, that version of the Lazarus Pit or whatever, didn't give you, like, um, like, immortality or whatever, so. But I think sometimes it does with Ra's al Ghul. Like I said, maybe that's a continuity thing. Like, it maybe depends on the continuity. I was just wondering, because if his, I mean, his mom's, like, probably not that old anyway, so she'd still be around. Uh, and even, and would she look exactly the same? The fact is they didn't include her must mean, like, something must have happened to her. Maybe that's what sent uh, Robin, that's what sent Damien off the deep end, and what, you know, but once again, he was, like, completely all alone, because he had no one. I don't know if he felt comfortable being like, oh, Harley's not here. Like, even if Harley was there, like, would he feel comfortable or not? I, I don't know. But, uh, either way, I, I love, um, well, there's only one handsome dude that was a part of, um, uh, the last remnants of humanity, which the guy Steve took offense to that, which I love when he gave the backstory, and Ivy was like, wow, that's actually really impressive. And he's like, oh, thanks. I used to be like a voiceover. And she's like, and I, Ivy, I mean, Harley being like, oh, yeah, face for radio. I was like, that's such a dick move. Uh, but I love the reveal. I was like, who's this person at the center going to be? Like, who are they? Who are you? Like, who are you? You're going to be someone of significance. I almost for a second thought, is it going to be um, Nora or whatever? But it, no, no, turns out it's their daughter, which I love. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's such a neat development and twist. Which, interesting little just behind the scene thing. The uh, actress, I'm going to butcher her name, is is it Zo um, Zosha Mamet? I'm probably butchering it. Because like, when I look at her name, it's not it's not spelled the way I thought Like I would pronounce it. It's like Saoirse Ronan. I wouldn't know to pronounce Saoirse Ronan's name the way it is. Like, if I did, was never told, like, oh, this is how you pronounce it. So it's kind of like that. But I'm probably still butchering um, Zosha's 
uh, name. I do apologize. I looked her up. I was like looking at a picture of her. I'm like, she seems familiar. But when I was like quickly scanning through her filmography, I'm like, I don't think I've seen anything she's in. Funny enough, she was in Flight Attendant. So part of me wonders that being the show, another show that Kaylee uh, Kuoko is in. I'm probably still butchering Kaylee's last name. But um, so I was like, oh, maybe that's a connect, especially because Kaylee's like a producer on the, on this show. So maybe she was able to kind of like slide Zosha's name or whatever. I, I I don't know. Maybe that was just, it feels like that was kind of meant to be on purpose. Like, oh, like you were in a show together and this is how like just kind of like making her voice your daughter is kind of like, you know. It felt like that was kind of done on purpose. But either way, turns out that Ivy and Harley are dead in this world. And apparently their daughter, I forgot the name, but the daughter's name that the character from Avatar. They're like, oh, that stupid movie. Because like, it's like, yeah, five years ago, I couldn't even remember if I'd actually seen that movie or not. Because I was like so high when I saw it. And it's like, and then I love, they're like, yeah, that's actually kind of like one of the greatest movies in cinema history. I'm like, that's, they, they poke a lot of fun in certain things in this episode. And I just thought that was the wildest thing. Or just like, I love that, that bit. That's just so funny to me. Um, that, and especially later on, uh, with a twist of, like, I felt like their daughter was hiding something. I figured her, the thing she was probably hiding from them is like, oh, you weren't good, like, you weren't around or something like that, which she was kind of getting to, but not really. Like, it's just like they were so caught up in their own BS, they weren't really good parents. She's like, yeah, like, when I was in first grade or whatever, I didn't even have a name. And I had to come up with my own name, which Harley's like, aha, I knew it. I knew we wouldn't come up with something stupid like that. Um, but later on she gets dirt, which I'm sure like you would think out of anyone that Ivy would have really respected that a lot of like, Oh, what are you? I mean, we never really found out what she was going to do with it, but I guess like she kind of picked up a little bit of that green thumb, like Ivy. I love, they, they kind of skip over it, but it's like, cause Harley's like, who like, Oh, who breastfed her and me? Or, uh, who, who like who, who breastfed you, you, her and me, uh, whose sperm did we use? It makes you wonder, who, um, who did they choose? That's going to be interesting. I think it'd be it's weird, but I, I think it'd be interesting, and I can almost see Harley doing it, but I don't know. Um, not unless we find out. I was like, I was, the, the, to me, I was like, Bruce? That seemed like a viable option? But then also part of me is like, the other part of me is like, are we going to find out she's actually like Nightwing's kid or something like that? That I, I, I don't know. It's like, would they be able to get like his dead sperm? I don't know. Not unless his sperm's at a sperm bank or maybe I just, it feels like that's going to be, an, that could be an interesting storyline of just like, maybe it's pretty significant who her dad is. Maybe it's not. I'm actually curious. I'm going to look it up, uh, whether or not, uh, whether Harley and Ivy have a kid in the comics. So looking it up, apparently she has had a daughter in the comics, but it's specifically in the Injustice storyline. She has a daughter named Lucy. So it doesn't seem like Ivy, at least at this point in the time in the comics, uh, doesn't seem like Ivy and her have a kid. But that's a that's a kid her and the Joker have together in the um, Injustice storyline. But uh, either way. But either way, the reason I was bringing up the whole dirt thing, and like like I said, I thought like out of anyone, like Ivy would be proud of her. But it's like she called it unobtainium. I've never seen Avatar. Nothing gets movies. I just never saw it back when it came out, or even in preparation for the second one. I haven't even seen the second one yet. But the fact is that it's like I know. Isn't that the name of the material that they're looking for? Like, like kind of like how Marvel has vibranium. Uh, Avatar has unobtainium. Like, that's, I think that's, and that's why, like, Ivy was like, fuck you, because she was so upset at, like, you naming it. It's like, oh, we don't call this dirt, we call it unobtainium. You know, it's just like, fuck you for calling it that. It's also interesting to know that um, Damien has basically frozen every hero and villain in the world. I guess that, I guess, like, he wanted to wipe everyone off the map. Um, not once again, like it had to be something related to his mom and him just being a kid. I mean, he is like twelve, and the world ended like twenty twenty four is when everything kind of went to shit. So he was like twelve or thirteen at the time the world ended, and he was probably like all alone. So like I said, something must have happened to his mom too to kind of sit him on like this dictator, so um, tyrant uh situation he's in. I do love that keeping, I wonder that robot of Alfred, is it just like an AI program to be like Alfred or is it kind of like a brain situation or robot man situation of like, no, no, that's legitimately Alfred's brain in this robot. I'm, I'm curious. 
Also, I love, once again, Cheryl's just always in the background. Turns out she's actually the one that raised Ivy and Harley's daughter uh, because they weren't, once again, the best parents because they tried to pretend like everything was okay and kind of un like ignoring like the underlining issues, which arguably they kind of did the same thing last season. But to be fair, that once again, that was mainly on Harley being like, oh, everything's fine when in actuality it wasn't. She just didn't want to rock the boat of their relationship. So... But yeah, they like, there's a lot of underlining issues that they never properly dealt with. They just like, they, rather than like actually talking stuff out, they just kind of buried it. And just like, there's probably like a lot of like underlining like resentment and stuff that kind of built up. And it's just like, yeah, weren't the, the greatest parents, but Cheryl was. And she's the one that thought like, oh, your name is great. Which I also felt bad too, because like when they were fighting Cheryl, they didn't actually hit Cheryl. They just moved out of the way and she just fell down that pit. And I'm like, that sucks. You just killed your daughter's kind of in her eyes the only mom she ever really has in this world because she doesn't really think much of you two so which i love for them being like oh we're going to be great parents as they proceed to beat her up they're like one day yeah someday uh we would we would be great parents i i, I love that because harley did open up to ivy about like hey i am um I am kind of going a little crazy. I this I, I'll be open with you in this moment before we like we are kind of cryogenically frozen and kind of put on display for uh, Damien. But it's like, oh well, babe, you've always kind of been a little crazy. So he's like, yeah, but this is a little different. I'm blacking out. I'm doing stuff I don't remember. I'm also uh, apparently seeing another me. So, but Ivy's like, right, I thought what I was doing was helping our relationship by putting up like that, you know, kind of boundaries. But it's like, no, in fact, I'm just helping us. I'm forcing us to push, we're pushing away from each other rather than getting closer. So it's like, you know, how they kind of handle that going forward. It's like, yeah, they've, they've recognized the underlining issue. So this was a nice development episode for their relationship. And so they're in a better place now, you know, uh, beating up your, um, future daughter i guess is kind of this weird uniting thing but it's like yeah they're gonna like go back and once they save the day they're gonna make sure this future never happens i do love the whole uh talking to a baby uh shark situation and um i even love that line where because like harley was like yeah your dad was always a good guy like he was a one person that would answer my call the moment i turned to the bat family and stuff and he's like yeah but your your new friends aren't your new fr uh, your new friends aren't your new friends, if you know what I mean, or something. And I also love that whole thing was, like, they're in giant, like, almost, um, front mission style mechs. Uh, which is kind of interesting that that was kind of all going down, so. Went back in time, but sadly, uh, they didn't fully go back to where they were supposed to. It's kind of like very Doctor Who-ish in, in, in the time travel approach of, yeah, we're supposed to come back on the 21st, uh, but we came back on the 27th because it didn't just line up perfectly. But it's also because the font is like, oh, because it was too fancy, Harley mistook the one for seven. And so, yeah, they ended up six days uh, in the future of their present day and the apocalypse, like the, the world's already kind of going to shit a little bit, even though it's not supposed to do that for, um, until 2024, uh, it's, well, I guess things got the worst in 2024 is when it really hit the fan, but things were already starting like even back in 2023. So, I mean, cause to be fair, it's like September. So there's only like a couple months until 2024, it, it, right? So, you know, because we don't know, know when exactly in 2024, like, everything, like, got blacked out and, like, crops and stuff failed and just the world went dark in a way that it did. So, that's interesting. And like I brought up earlier, I do believe the other Harley we saw is a time travel Harley. But it's interesting because before they left, they learned from uh, Baby Shark that, um, I'm calling him that, but I'm like, is that, was that his actually name? I think it was, but I don't remember. Uh... It turns out the person responsible for ending the world, they, they kind of put it on them, but I'm, she kind of put it on Harley and their daughter kind of put it on them. But I'm like, how is it their fault? Especially when um, King Shark Kid was like, oh, yeah, it's uh, it was Lex, which I'm like, not Lex. He went super overboard trying to compensate. 
uh, because of the whole Ivy showing him up at Malcon thing and him kind of losing his shit. Like, last time we saw him, he was overcompensating. Like, he got cheek fillers and stuff like that, just trying to... You know, we, we kind of got it a little bit at Malcon of just, like, how, like, he tries to, like, buff himself up just to kind of compensate for, like, Superman. It's like, you know, he overcompensates. So maybe he overcompensated in this regard and kind of, like, destroy the world. And I don't we don't know if he's one of those people that was encased in ice or not, or maybe he's dead. I also, I do love that it's like, oh, with sats like that, I'm going to put you right beside Kite Man. I was like, hey, we haven't gotten any Kite Man this season, have we? Once again, I have to look into it because we, once again, we were supposed to get like a, a spin off of him, like running a bar. I don't know if that was just kind of like a kibosh was put on that or not. I, I'll, I'll look into that a little bit more later on, but, um, It would have been kind of poetic for him to be, like, right beside. I hope, like, I wonder if him and Golden Glide are still dating. Uh, it'd be kind of, I don't know, very poetic if, like, Harley and Ivy ended up being frozen, like, right next to him. Because it'd almost be like, oh, let's all sit together at the Villies. Like, like this wasn't planned and done on purpose. But either way, um, the other side of the episode involves Barbara's investigation. Well, because Joker has, uh, you know, been living it up now. Like, the villains are so happy to have him back. We get Psycho this episode. It's like, hey, Psycho! That's that's dope. Because oh, obviously we already got a little bit of Psycho, like, one or two, maybe two or three episodes of Psycho last season. So just to kind of get a little appearance from him in this episode. And Joker, I love him being on the phone with James Corden. Like, oh, you want oh, you want me to help you with basically carpool karaoke? And he's like, oh, want me to co-host? Yeah, sharing the spotlight's kind of not my thing. And it's like, oh, um, they're calling him like a needy motherfucker and stuff like that, which I'm like, I that has to be written specific on purpose because I'm like, because obviously it's like the... The the running thing around the internet, I won't say, I've never had any experience with James Corden, so I can't say anything, but the running thing is like, kind of an asshole. That's just what people say. I don't know for sure, but a lot of people kind of ru have been running with that, so specifically people work with, that's that's neither here nor there. Feels like the show just kind of leans, leans into the whole shit on James Corden of it all. Um, but yeah, uh, Joker was on... Uh, psycho show and was doing these interviews and I love like you read, reading some of the comments I love it where it's just like oh uh, Nightwing's no uh, ch basically his cheeks have clapped their last clap or something like that and someone wrote a comment being like that's why I live in Metropolis and I talk about it all the time it's like Gotham seems like it might be the worst place to live in fiction which I'm sure they're probably all worst places but it's just like maybe in the DC universe it might be one of the worst places I think the only place worse to live in Gotham on um and um D uh, in the DC universe it's living on the Earth X version of Gotham like probably probably like the worst you can get but because I'm sure there's some multiverse other multiverse versions of that uh, that are just like god awful but yeah that's just like the general consensus of like Gotham sucks so it's like yeah that's why I live in Metropolis which I'm like Metropolis Metropolis has its issues but Metropolis ain't no Gotham so. Even asking what his last words were, but then like Batgirl shows up and tries to hide herself, which I love that Joker's like, hey, Batgirl, is that you? She's like, no, it's not. This is Lady Justice or something, but whatever. Here's footage proving that you didn't kill Nightwing because you were doing a sleep apnea study. Uh, so, and now it's like, I love, what was it uh, Psycho said? He's like, the one thing my fans, the things I, the two things my fans hate are a woman in power and stolen valor. And so it ended up giving like a uh, cycle, a whole bunch of listens. And now Joker's being ridiculed and it's like, oh, you won't come back from this. But I'm like, I'm curious to see what is his comeback going to be? How is he going to, um, what is he going to do? Cause he didn't kill Nightwing and he, he had done some villainous stuff like that. Um, yeah, like he blew up that, um, lawnmower. Like, I can't remember if the, the uh, guy was on it when he blew it up. But, like, yeah, he set that park on fire. And, like, that was his first step back into villainy. And we know that he's kind of got his family in on it, too. So, have they really taken down the steps to, like, go towards villainy? Like, that all we saw was them laughing maniacally, planning stuff out. But we don't know if they've executed upon it. They've acted upon any of that. So, but Joker's going to be a laughing stalk the moment's like, oh, he lied. Oh, he's a clout-chasing bastard. Taking, uh... 
stolen valor of like stealing someone else's crime which because it seems like lex is the one behind the world ending it seems like he must have been the one that killed nightwing too once again i don't know if this is some grand plan of his it seems like he's the one but maybe there's some other part to play i mean it could be like his like it was maybe to make harley make her think she's going crazy and then i wonder Harley being like, I don't remember doing that, like, bringing Barbara the, like, egg sandwich or whatever, which I'm like, didn't she bring her an egg sandwich? Was that supposed to be a nod to, I actually don't remember, was it like an egg salad sandwich, or was it just like an egg sandwich, she said, I don't remember, I'm like, wasn't that what Margot Robbie ate in Birds of Prey? Wasn't it like an egg sandwich she ate? I might be, I don't remember now, because I was almost thinking the second there, I was like, because I know that was, it's, I haven't, because I haven't seen Birds of Prey and A Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. I have not seen it since it was originally in theaters back in 2020 of February. That's, I've only, that's how I've only ever seen it once. I really like the movie. I also really like the title. Most people don't, but I really like the title. But uh, either way, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what sandwich she said she brought. Barbara was like, you brought me. I was like, that's why I was like, is that just Harley being crazy and not remembering? Or was that another time travel thing of like, Harley was doing something in the Batcave at the time. Um, but I like if the, if it was an egg sandwich, it, like I said, I was like, is that supposed to be like a nod to Margot Robbie being like, because that, that's actually something she eats in real life, I think. I think they added that to the movie because of that, if I remember correctly. It's been so long, I don't remember. Like I said, I, I could be completely full of shit on that. But either way, my, my, the point I was about to make before I went on my other diatribe is I was curious, could it be that Lex is, like I said, I, I, like with the, with the, uh, Johns, I, when the Johns were first given to Ivy, like a couple episodes back, I said at the time, I wasn't sure if that was Lex just being genuine or whether that was him gaslighting her and trying to like pump her up and trying to destroy her. That could have been the case. It could have been like, right. And even now he's gaslighting Harley into thinking she's crazy and ended up killing Nightwing to kind of set this all in motion. Cause so he could be the one behind everything that's kind of been going on. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see that. Those are my current thoughts, but we'll have to see how this all plays out. Only what three episodes left this season. So I'm really excited to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.